Welcome to Better Life, Better Business, your go-to podcast for how you can grow your business, double your productivity and time off, work smarter and not harder. Brought to you by local business coaching expert, Christoph Now, CEO of Balance 6 in Walnut Creek, California. Welcome back to another great episode of Better Life, Better Business. I am Christoph Nauer, your business coach specializing in time management and author of the Amazon bestseller, From No Time to Free Time, Six Steps to Work-Life Balance for Business Owners. We have a very special guest here with us today. Welcome, Patty. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited. My pleasure. It's wonderful to have you. Um, as you, if you're a faithful listener of my podcast, you know that the purpose of my podcast is to provide excellent resources, helpful tools, tips, and tricks to business owners. And that's exactly why I asked you to be a guest, Patty. So please describe the value that you bring to business owners and entrepreneurs. Ah, that's so fun. I love entrepreneurs and small business owners. There is something intangible when those types of like-minded individuals come together. And entrepreneurs are a very special breed of people, which I think you can agree with, um, right? We all get into business, be, I should say, it's my perception that we all get into business because we're usually very passionate about one particular thing, or there's one thing that we love to do. We're really good at it. However you want to think about that. And what happens is we're so excited and we're like, yes, this is going to be great. My business is going to grow and explode and it's going to be wonderful. I'm going to help and serve all these people. And then what happens a few steps into running that business is what I call the business of running the business gets in the way. And I like to call that entrepreneurial ADD. You and I have spoken about this, Christoph. And there's a lot of things that get bogged down, that bog down the business owners. So the biggest thing that I do is I help them kind of control or tame that chaos and that entrepreneurial ADD with things like um, business automation and a lot of marketing strategy to make sure we have their ducks in a row, so to speak. And the business is running in the background behind them while they are marketing themselves and their services while they are serving their clients and basically just fulfilling on what they said they were going to do. Well, you're speaking my language, Patty. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. I mean, that's exactly right. Sometimes what happens is the business starts to drive the owner or the entrepreneur instead of the other way around. You know, it's nice to be your own boss, but that means it's up to you to decide when you're going to work and what you're going to work on and what you're going to do and how you're going to spend your most precious commodity, which is time. You yes. know? And so that's really what I'd like you to expand a little bit on is the automation you talked about, the marketing, because like you said, you know, you, you think you have the best things in sliced bread, but nobody knows about that. So how can you tell the world you know, that you're the best thing since sliced bread. You know, I mean, one of the things I did is write a book, but still there's so many different things. And this sounds like what it is you do. So tell us a little bit about how you do that and, and how that works. Absolutely. Um, I think we can agree that there are, in a nutshell, like there are subcategories, right? But there's basically three components to a business. There is marketing, sales, and fulfillment at the end of the day, like those three main primary buckets or umbrellas, if you will, there are a lot of things that come under those, of course. Um, but those are the three big ones. And typically what happens with entrepreneurs is they will be heavy on the marketing, which is great. That's what we should do, right? We're getting our name out there. We're going on podcasts or vodcasts. We're doing webinars, training events. We're showing up on social media. And so the marketing is what we need to do to get to the next step, which is the sales, right? Um, so business owner is killing it on the marketing. And then what happens is sales start to come in, which is amazing. That was the ultimate goal. And when sales come in, then the marketing drops off. So now instead of having a constant flow of new leads and energy around our business, that uh, bucket, if you will, has dried up. We're focusing on the sales. 
And then once we close the sale, the next piece is that fulfillment. So when we're busy in fulfillment, both the marketing and the sales have dried up. So as a business owner, what we need to be able to do is, is keep all of these three components running at the same time. And that is very difficult to do if you are a solopreneur or you have a very small team. So that's essentially what I do. I run a marketing and sales agency with a focus on business automation. What does that mean? That, that, that whole phrase. Basically, what we do is we put the systems in place to ensure that we have messages and email marketing that is constantly being dripped out to our, to our leads, to our list. Hopefully you have a list um, or you're building a list because we need to be able to nurture those contacts, especially in this online world of online businesses. And, and I throw into that like coaches, consultants, and service providers. Those are all basically in the online world. And those types of industries, people are not necessarily ready to hire you the moment that you come into their world or that they see you they're on not? social media. No. Really? Come on. <laughs> Dude, not- you, know, you just bust my bubble. <laughs> yeah. I try to compare. I think when we spoke, I, I mentioned this to you. Um, you know, it's not like if you're driving your car and all of a sudden your engine starts to smoke and you've got this big issue on your car, you have to find a mechanic that is like, as close as possible. And it's pretty urgent, right? That's an urgent need. So you're going to find someone just right that moment and you're ready to hire them and make that exchange of services for money. And with us, online business owners, coaches, consultants, and service providers, that relationship can take at least seven to 13 individual touches to go from client or prospect, I'm sorry, from prospect or lead to client or customer, whatever language you want to use. And and that's a minimum seven to 13. So I like to throw some math in there, right? Let's just say most people in this industry, we don't need a ton of clients every single month because there's a service, right? Usually we need to interact with people. So let's say it's 10, right? 10 leads a month, really good, solid, hot leads that come into your business a month. And we'll take the minimum of that seven to 13 touches. So the question is, do you have time to manually follow up with those 10 leads seven times, 70 touches in one month? I'll ask you. Nope, most likely no. not. You know, and, and you, you're absolutely right. Yeah, it's the, it's the follow-up, <clears throat> you know, in my line of work, if there was no follow-up, I wouldn't have any clients, you know? Mm-hmm. Very few clients, you know, um, sign up on the spot. I mean, I had I had a couple this last two weeks, two yeah. weeks, um, but most of them not. You know, and that's the whole idea. Of course, you being in marketing, you understand that better than anybody else. We market to the now clients, the now buyer, and ninety five percent of the people are future buyers. Yep. And so, why we don't focus on the ninety five percent? I honestly don't understand. You know, you're a hundred percent correct. And One. so, yes, and I think what you said about these three components, you know, we need to leave all three faucets open. You know, we can adjust them. You know, if there's too much coming in, we can turn it down a little bit. But if we close them all the way, then at some point we we have nothing coming in. It, it just equals feast or famine. It's mm-hmm. a breeding ground for that roller coaster cycle that nobody wants to be on. It's very uncomfortable. It breeds self-doubt, scarcity, imposter syndrome. It breeds every single thing that so many entrepreneurs get stuck there. And the solution, quite frankly, is really easy. Like we make it much more difficult than it needs to be. And I don't know if it's fear of success or like, like I mentioned those things, you know, imposter syndrome, you know, there's, I, I think there's a little bit of everything that comes in there, but I believe it is part of my theory that business owners are, there is some self-sabotage that happens when you are an entrepreneur, because just what we're talking about, this topic of follow-up, people don't do the things that need to be done. And it doesn't have to be that hard. It doesn't have to be a business owner se- sending 70 emails or making 70 phone calls or 70 texts or DM or whatever you want to call it. 
it doesn't have to be that hard. You can use systems like the ones that I put in place to do that for you, to be continuing to follow up, to make sure that those leads do not fall through the cracks. And honestly, you mentioned something about, you know, not a lot are hire us on the spot. I think the best clients are the ones who do wait. Yeah, they really do. Homework, you know, they did their homework. Yeah, and they're thinking about it. They're thinking it through, and they're thinking, how do I want to utilize this professional, and what is it that I want in my business? Like, those are the best clients. When I hear from people that have been, sometimes they're silently stalking you, like they're consuming your content, but they're not liking it or commenting or anything. They're just silently over there on the internet, watching what you're doing. And then when they raise their hand, I don't have a credit card, but that's what it feels like. It feels like they're just raising their hand and they're ready to hand you a credit card. Yeah. Yeah. They do the work, you know, uh, you know, a lot of what you were saying just kind of leads into one of the questions I wanted to ask you about that whole idea of delegating. You know, this is one of the things that is, that I really my clients hear this at every single session, you know, what are you delegating? What are you delegating? If you have a hard time with that, maybe you want to put a sticky note on your computer. So each time you open your computer, it stares back at you, you know, because this is a perfect example. We cannot do everything as a business owner. It's impossible. Correct. But so many entrepreneurs feel like, oh, I can't afford it or I can't, you know, whatever. They have, you know, excuses. So yeah. What role does delegating play in your own business, Patty? Good question. Um, so in my business, I do have a team now. I didn't in the beginning because I couldn't, it was like everybody else, right? I couldn't afford it. Um, so I do have a team now. I delegate things that, that, that don't need me. That's the whole idea, right? They don't need me as the business owner. My main role in my business is marketing and fulfillment because anybody can, like, I shouldn't say anybody, um, depending on how you structured your business. And if you have an initial phone consultation with someone, but then someone else can come in and do that follow-up, either a person or a system. Because when I think of delegation, it doesn't have to be a person. It can be automation automation can be your delegation. Like I did a webinar actually that was titled um, automation versus delegation with like bossing gloves. Which one, what are you ready for? Because it's, it's actually easier to set up automation in my mind than it is to delegate tasks to a team. And this is the reason. Because as business owners, when they're in that space of not being able to do everything, managing a, an employee is really, really challenging for a lot of people. Really challenging. Like they don't actually know, know how to delegate properly. Um, that's probably where you coach them, which is amazing. That is a skill set that people absolutely need to have. But it's hard for people to figure out what things to delegate, how to delegate, and how to make sure that they have that consistency. Mm -hmm. Because if, yeah. if the procedures and things aren't in place, then, then they're running up against that wall. Right. They're running up against that barrier of like, oh, wait, how did we do it that one time and it's not documented? How do we make sure we have the same level of service when we're delegating to someone who's never as vested as we are? Exactly. And, that, and that's the fear that a lot of business owners have that keeps them from uh, delegating to begin with. But I think, you know, that's, um, we don't have time to go into the whole idea of automation. So I think that's one thing that uh, I really would like to encourage our listeners to reach out to you to learn more about this whole idea of automation, because that's really, you're absolutely right. You know, then that takes away the fear of delegating and, mm -hmm. you know, basically puts things on autopilot. So yeah. if you want to find out how to put things on autopilot, talk to Patty. Yes. So, yes. Uh, what's one thing you wish you had known when you began your business, Patty? Mm. That is a good question. Um, I wish I knew the level of consistency it was going to take. I think that is, 
it's the longest, I feel like it's the biggest learning curve for business owners. And it's one that changes instantly. As soon as you're consistent with all things, right? Your marketing, your lead generation, um, your follow-up, like we talked about, all of those things, the way that you serve your clients and things change. We come up with new programs and new services all the time and that's fine. Um, but that consistency piece is, I mean, there's a quote, I think it's something like everything you want is on the other side of consistency. <laughs> it's also on the other side of fear. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah. Well, and that's one of the things I always say to my clients, you know, the growth really happens when we step outside our comfort zone, you know, and, and that's scary. Yeah. And, and I know it myself, I, you know, when I, uh, was told by my coach to go through a rebranding process and the branding coach told me new business name, new website, new logo, new everything, you know, I was like, oh, geez, you know, you know. but yeah. that's when the growth happens. Um, have you, I have to ask you a question, Christoph, if you don't mind. Um, no. Have you seen the image that is um, it's called the 2% mindset? Have you seen that? The 2% mindset? Uh, yeah. No. Okay. Can I explain it? Do we have time? Sure. Okay. So you can Google it. Anybody can Google it. It's, it's all over the internet. And the idea is, is just what we talked about when you get outside your comfort zone. So there's a 2% mindset and then there's the 98%, right? And in the 98%, it's in a circle and it's all the things that are comfortable to us. Familiarity, routine, um, just all the things, think of all the things that, that make us feel comfortable, right? It's kind of relaxed, it's steady. And then the 2% mindset is what's on the outside of that circle. And it's every single thing that we need as a business owner. It is fear. It is just being uncomfortable, getting comfortable, being uncomfortable. It is unknown. It's up there standing on that ledge. Like, I don't know what's over there, but we're just going to do it. It's, it, I have it printed. It's in my office yeah. and I look at it all the time as a reminder. Okay. Oh, you just, I guess it's just a different way of looking at the same thing that we're talking about. You know, you're absolutely right. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it, the whole idea of procrastination, I always say, you know, a guilty as charged. I have a master's degree in procrastination, you know, and because my coach has been telling me for years to have a, a podcast. I had all kinds of excuses for it, you know, also the whole idea of writing a book, you know, and so, you know, and you know, now that I have both, it, it, it's fantastic. Why did I wait this long? I have no idea, you know, right. <laughs> but I think what this is just another image to say the same thing, you know, and I, I think it, it is so, it is so true. Um, Patty, you may or may not know that only about 3% of people have written goals for their lives and their businesses. How do you handle goal setting and are you part of the 3%? I am part of the 3%. I figured, but um, I had to ask. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't always. I wasn't always. Um, so I started something this year, actually, which has been incredible. And I, I'm a gratitude person. So I am, I'm always thinking about gratitude in, in whatever capacity that means, whether I write it down or I just say it, you know, kind of in my morning or evening routine. Um, but one of the things that I started doing in 2021 is one of the first things I do when I sit down at my desk is I review and I read the goals that I have set out for myself and for my business. Um, out loud, quiet, it doesn't really matter, um, but I read them every single day. So I'm constantly reminding myself of them. So that is an absolute game changer. And then the other thing is I map out, um, I do a big goal setting at the end of the current year for the next year. And then I'm always reviewing them. So I kind of have my big overarching goals and I will break those down into smaller pieces. So whether that's quarterly, monthly, weekly, that doesn't really matter, but I'm always aware of them and reviewing them. Well, that's absolutely fantastic. I mean, wow, I think you were the only person I've talked to so far who looks at them daily. I mean, I do weekly, but that's that's incredible. But you're right, it is a game changer, you know, it really is. Uh, wow, that's fantastic. 
Um, so we are getting close to ending this. I wanted to ask a couple more questions. Uh, who are some of the people who have been influential in your life and in your business that you can remember? In my life and my business, both? Well, or you can pick one or the other. <laughs> um, I will, well, I'll say my mom for my life um, because she's passed away. So I can't go into too much detail or I'll end up, I'll end up in tears over here. Um, so my mom for sure, love her. And um, in business, gosh, so many people, honestly, um, so many people. So I will, I'll start with my dad. My dad has always kind of been like my business uh, thermometer, if you will. And, and even before I started my own business, just when I was changing jobs, I would always talk with him about business or the job that I was doing, changing to. Um, and then I had some great mentors. I used to work for Regis Business Centers, which is a international company. They lease. Um, are you familiar with Regis Business Centers? Not familiar. Are, I've heard of the name. I've heard the name, but that okay. huge company. Um, they lease office space like by the month. And I had some wonderful mentors in that company. Um, my very first client, which was kind of an accidental client. I started working with him as a virtual assistant. He was definitely a big, um, big inspiration. He had his own company and um, gosh, there's so many. I could just pull from everywhere. I mean, no, family. It's okay. like I, mean, that's of, I think of, you said the key word in there is mentoring and mentor. Mm -hmm. You know, and and if you want to run a successful business, you have to have mentors in your life, you know. And so yeah. for me, it's Brian Tracy. I was certified by him as a time management master. And this guy is just absolutely fabulous, you know. So I just wanted to find out, you know, who are you? But I think the, the key word that you used in the mentors, you know, because mm -hmm. that's really critically important. It is. Yeah. I mean, you can see my bookshelf here. It's That's part of it. It's just full of books, yeah. full of books. So thank you so much for taking the time to uh, talk with me. Um, now, at this point, I would imagine that the listeners want to figure out how to get in touch with you. Um, so how can they reach you? Do you have a special offer for them? Oh, great question. Um, so they can reach me. I am most prominently on LinkedIn and Facebook as Patty M. Rogers. So P-A-T-T-Y, my middle initial M. Rogers, R-O-G-E-R-S, so they can find me there. And um, same thing, my website is actually getting redone. Um, so we we talked about your rebranding and it's it's not up yet, but Patty M. Rogers will be completed very, very soon. You can go there.com. And a special offer, honestly, I would, I am a big, um, I'm a big fit person. So if, if anything that Christoph and I talked about today sparked some little thing in the back of your mind or like, ooh, maybe I should think about automation or how I think about the delegation in my company, any of those things, the lead follow-up, just reach out. I'm happy to get on a phone call, um, honestly, with anybody that is listening to this podcast. So I will make sure that you have the link because that'll be easier than me trying to spat it off to book a call. I love chatting with like-minded individuals, like I said. So certainly let's book a call and, and chat about it and see if, if there's a fit. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. I uh, really appreciate it. So thank you for sharing your expertise. And I think if you had all curious about automation, you know, and uh, hopefully by now you are, please reach out to Patty. Uh, many thanks to all, of, to all of our listeners today for joining us. If you would like to learn more about my services or want to get my Amazon bestseller, please be sure to visit my website, balance6.biz, balance, the word, the number six, dot biz. Until next time, have a better life and a better business. This week's episode of Better Life, Better Business is brought to you by CANC Video Productions. Since 1985, CANC Video has been providing live streaming, event production, and analog to digital transfer services. 
They capture those life-changing moments, preserving your history for current and future generations. Because your history matters. Visit their website at cacvideo.com. Thank you so much for your sponsorship. That's all for now. Thanks for listening to another episode of Better Life, Better Business with business and time management coach Christoph Nauer with Balance 6, the leading business and time management company in Northern California. Visit them at balance6.biz.